Shalom, first and foremost, let me give all praise, glory, and honor. Nihau, Bashim, Yabshai, Bashim, Kagadash. Double honors our apostles and knowledge of your millstone. And peace and salutation to all you brothers out there teaching this word of truth and sincerity. And shalom to the whole elect, the one third of the nation of Israel, you so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. You are the Hebrew Israelites, according to the Bible. And death and destruction to all red Hebrew Edomites, you so called white people, including this man here. Uh, John Bolton, which is a red Hebrew Edomite, okay? Ambassador John Bolton, he's a, <clears throat> this tweet by this journalist, Andrew Kaczynski. Bolton asked about tweets calling Maduro a dictator who violates human rights. Do you not see U.S. support for other dictators around the world undermines the credibility of your argument? That's what CNN asked. Bolton says, no, I don't think it does. I think it's separate. Okay, so I'm gonna play this video. Okay, because it's it's, South, it's it's clear the to, hypocrisy of this let's devil. Let's South America. You tweeted on Friday about Venezuela's Nicolas Maduro. Quote: Those who continue to support a dictator that violates human rights and steals from the starving should not be allowed to walk around with impunity. Unquote. This is a matter of course, and this didn't start with the Trump administration. The United States supports any number of dictators who violate human rights, including the leaders of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the UAE. Should those who support those dictators not be allowed to walk around with impunity? You know, I've, I've put out roughly 150 tweets on Venezuela. This is a new experiment in public diplomacy. Uh, the fact is that we are trying to rally support uh, for the peaceful transition of power from Maduro to Juan Guaido, whom we recognize as president. Uh, and I think uh, since most of my tweets also come out in Spanish because we want to reach the Latin American audience in particular, that a lot of people, especially on the political left, in the hemisphere and around the world, now understand that the failed experiment of Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro needs to end. So I'd like to see as broad a coalition as we can put together to replace Maduro, to replace the whole corrupt regime. That's what we're trying to do. Well, certainly Maduro is nobody that I would defend in any way. But well, that's good to hear. But do you, do you not see that uh, the United States support for other brutal dictators around the world undermines the the credibility of the argument you're making? No, I don't think it does. I think it's separate. And I think, look, in this administration, uh, we're not afraid to use the phrase Monroe Doctrine. This, this is a country in our hemisphere. It's been the objective of American presidents going back to Ronald Reagan to have a completely democratic hemisphere. I uh, mentioned back in uh, at the end of last year that uh, we're looking very much at the troika of tyranny, including Cuba and Nicaragua, as well as Maduro. Part of the problem in Venezuela is the heavy Cuban presence, 20 to 25,000 Cuban security officials by reports that have been in the public. This is the, the sort of thing that, uh, that we find unacceptable, and that's why we're pursuing these policies. I only have a few more seconds, but I want to ask you about Venezuela. Republican Senator Marco Rubio sponsoring legislation to offer TPS status, temporary protected status, to Venezuelans in the U.S. who are at risk of being deported back to the political turmoil and worse uh, in Venezuela. Would you support that? Well, we'll have to take a look at that. Our uh, objective is to have Juan Guaido become uh, the interim president so we can get new presidential elections. And if that were to happen, uh, we wouldn't need to grant TPS status. So I'd rather focus on uh, getting the transformation in Venezuela and getting them back on the road to uh, stability. You hear this devil, man? He mentioned this thing called the Monroe Doctrine. The spirit, I'm actually going to, I was supposed to have it ready, but the spirit had it. I'll just do it right now. Okay. The Monroe Doctrine is best known in U.S. policy toward the Western Hemisphere. Buried in a routine annual message delivered to Congress by President James Monroe in December 1823, the doctrine warns European nations that the United States would not tolerate further colonization or puppet monarchs. So the Monroe Doctrine, that was the James Monroe, a pre a evil, wicked Edomite, okay, that used to be a president of the United States. Back then, US, the U.S. started feeling itself, okay? They started feeling powerful, and they, they wanted first dibs, okay? Uh, because America, right, it declared its independence from colonizers, so-called colonizers of the British, which they still were controlled. They're still controlled by the elites in Britain and Europe, okay? But it was a it was a policy where they got first dibs, okay? First dibs on all the goodies, pretty much. All right, I don't have to go too deep into it. You know how this devil at operates. But here it is. They're calling Esau on, on, on his uh, hypocrisy, okay?
here it is. You can't you uh, um you 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 support dictators all throughout the world, okay? That are just killing people. China, all right. If you speak against the government in China, they'll put you in a concentration camp. They'll put you to death. But America is dealing with China on a high level. Oh, and and UAE, uh, and these Arab Arab nations, they support uh just straight up death of their the, their citizens as well. Well, America does it here, so why do they care? It's not about democracy, man. It's about the goodies, okay? And the goodies are that oil, okay? The money. And look, everyone everyone in the comments, I'll just run through some of them, okay? Translation, we want their oil, not the smaller amounts of oil from elsewhere. It's close, and it's all there for the taking, <laughs> which is pretty much what he's actually saying, right? It's... Oh, it's in our backyard. When they say the Monroe Doctrine is referring to America's backyard. Oh, the Western Hemisphere. That's that's why, okay? And did the Monroe Doctrine ever get done away with? No, obviously not. Just like uh, all these other so-called doctrines, the so-called white man has been uh, using and uh, uh, pushing on the world. The Monroe Doctrine, the Doctrine of Discovery, those are things that were never done away with, especially by the U.S. government. And by all other Edomite governments. Don't be silly. U.S. support for our own deposit chief executive who violates human rights undermines the credibility of that argument all by itself. Bolton is a neocon globalist. Bolton is a waste of taxpayer money. We had tweeted a before and after pic of Gaddafi while, uh, I don't know, while DT was in an NK. I don't know what that's talking about. Oh, North Korea. Donald Trump is in North Korea. Do you really think Kim didn't see it and say, hmm, I want to end up like him, so I'll give up my nukes? Yeah, because the reason why you could be diplomatic with with uh, North Korea is because they have nuclear a nuclear arsenal. All right? This 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 guy's through, okay? The so-called white man. He's totally exposed, and nobody is falling for it. Where's all the positive comments here? John Bullen is not known in diplomatic circles for his intelligence. Also had him, but the master of argument stuns again with the logical mastery of peerless rhetoric. All debate opponents just melted away with the artful line, I think it's separate. Yeah, anything to justify, man. Synopsis, I want their oil. Yeah, just say it straight up. Which he already has said. Why are taxpayers paying him salary if he thinks it doesn't matter? Alright, so you already know. Everyone's here saying it. Okay, everybody's saying it. So I'm going to bring out some scriptures. This is a Habakkuk 2 and 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. It will not tarry. And that's what we see right now. Okay, hold on one moment. Alright, so like it. it says, For the vision is yet for a point in time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Yeah, so the Lord has it that the Lord has it that this vision of America that we've been speaking of about World War Three, it's it's actually happening right now, okay? But wait for it. Just wait. Because if America really wants to go into Venezuela, there's gonna be funk. There's gonna be it's gonna be uh how do you say there's gonna be retaliation. From the other nations who've been investing in the Maduro regime, because Maduro, his backers are Russia and China, right? And they 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 invested a lot of money into them, okay? And they they, they want to deal with, they want the deal on the oil. And America has been getting money from their oil, but they want it completely. That's why they set up that guy Juan Guaido up in there. And Juan Guaido is a Edomite, okay? He's a puppet. Okay? He represents the the elite, rich, white ruling class. Of Venezuela and it's no different what happened in Cuba okay in Cuba uh, <coughs> the Cuban revol uh, revolution in the I believe it was in the 50s with uh, Castro it was all about the poor trying kicking out the so-called white man because all the Cubans that live in Florida that are that are like Marco Rubio all those guys are are what they're Edomites okay they're the rich ruling Edomite class of Cuba and when when the revolution went down they had to dip out why because they were gonna get their asses killed okay they were gonna get put to death by all them them wild ass Israelites okay from the tribe of Manasseh and from the uh, the other tribes 
but mainly the tribe of Manasseh. For the vision is yet for a point in time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. That's right. So let's wait for World War III. It's going to happen, man. We can see it all going down. You got the Trump. He's out in North Korea right now. That's not good. That's, that's going to fail, okay? It's going to fail. North Korea, because Trump, he wants to get North Korea on his side. Why? Because he knows that uh, uh, he's trying to set up. He, he knows that America's going to be destroyed, that these uh, the elites... The people that are running the show, so-called deep state or whatever, they want to get rid of him, man. So he's he's planning something. He's trying to devise a get-out scheme, right? Because America's going to be hit with nuclear missiles. So he doesn't want that to happen. That's why he's over there talking to, talking to Kim Jong-un. And Kim Jong-un has nuclear weapons, and he's willing to use them. That's why That's why you, you can go into Venezuela. They don't got nukes, okay? And if they did have nukes, you wouldn't be over there. You wouldn't be doing all this BS. Behold his soul. You wouldn't allow that to happen anyways because the uh, Western Hemisphere is under the so-called Monroe Doctrine. And the Monroe Doctrine makes all the, the countries that are in the Western Hemisphere pretty much colonies for America. And they are. All right? But when it comes to those people seeking refuge uh, to come over here, right, to escape the turmoil that America has brought onto them, they're illegals now. They deport them. It says... But his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But the just shall live by faith. Yeah, the soul with that's inside you, Edomites. This it's not upright in you, man. That's why everything you do is lying. This guy Bolton is a straight bull faced liar. He just want he's a what they would call a war hawk. He wants war. He wants smoke. He wants to use his weapons to go out and do what to dominate the rest of the world and steal things. Yeah, also because he transgressed by wine. And what's that wine? Oh, it's our it's our policy that all the the nations in the Western Hemisphere are democratic nations, meaning oh yeah, and they they believe that Maduro's a dictator. So be, by saying that, they make it seem that it's not a democratic nation. But wait, Maduro won his election, right? Oh, the, but that election was a sham. You try to say the same thing about Trump. Oh yeah, that election was it was it was collusion with the Russians. The Russians hacked the elections, so then that would make America not a demic. That make Trump a dictator then, right? This guy, this guy really is just freestyling. All right, he just be making shit up, and the people people are, are are waking up to it. Okay, especially all the BS coming from America. Okay, it's more specifically, yeah. Also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home who enlarges the desire as hell and is as death. It cannot be satisfied, but gathered unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. And that's what he's doing. That's what the Monroe Doctrine is. He enlarges the desire as hell. He wants to enlarge it through the entire Western Hemisphere. And he doesn't have a problem with United Arab Emirates because they set up those dictators. When Juan Guaido gets set up, he's going to be a dictator. Okay, and he's going to do what? He's going to turn around and give all the wealth of Venezuela to the white, so-called white man here in America. Because that's that's how they operate. That's how they get down. While while Maduro, he wants to use the the wealth to help the people. And the people are what they're Israelites. They call them the mestizos, the Afros, and the Indios. Okay, the people that are on the lower uh, caste system that was set up by who you so called white people, you Edomites, when you came over here and colonized this land. Okay, all the shit that America has to go through. Where the black people and the Latinos and the Native Americans were at the bottom of the barrel. That was the same thing that is that happened in Mexico. The same thing that happened in Venezuela. The same thing that happened in Argentina. Okay, and, and all throughout the four of the, the Western Hemisphere, all the colonized nations here. And who's sitting at the top? The red Hebrew Edomite, all right? He also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home. Who enlarges his desire as hell and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. Yeah, and you you enlarge your desire as hell and is as death. Because what are you doing to all these people? You just bring death and destruction upon them. You bring all your weapons. You you strafe villages. You you bomb. You carpet bomb entire cities. You destroy the infrastructure. And then you go in and you kill the, the leaders of the nation like you did to uh, Gaddafi. Right? And what, what, what happened after you killed Gaddafi? 
Hillary Clinton was caught up there laughing about. She laughed. Yeah, we got him. But that's why you do. You enlarge your desire as hell as the grave. And you cannot be satisfied. You want more. That's why you want Venezuela. Oh, uh, you want you want to go in Iran. Or you want to go on the lands that have great riches, that have great resources, and they're not sharing it with you, so to speak. They're not giving it all to you freely. So what do you want to do? You want to go in and destroy them. But gather him unto him all nations, the heathen of all people. Yeah, all the people. Oh, you're under our rule. Oh, you need to be a Democrats. You need to be a democratic nation. Shall not all these people take a parable against him and a taunting power against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long unto him that laideth with thick clay. Yeah, woe, woe to you and destruction to America because you increase that which is not yours. You don't own all these things, you, you red Hebrew Edomites. You don't own those people's oil. But you do because you believe you're entitled to it because the Most High gave you that blessing, right? That blessing is a sword and the fatness of the earth. But what's happening? You're lading yourself with thick clay. You're going in the debt fighting these wars. You're paying out all this money for that coup, and it's not working out. Why isn't it working out? Because America is finished, all right? America is not coming back. It's not big and bad and strong anymore. America just can't go and step step its red foot all over the place and just stomp out uh, nations that, that, do not, that cannot protect themselves. Why? Because the other nations are gathering against them. The main one being Russia and also China. Okay, and they're the main investors in the Maduro regime, pretty much. Shall they not? And then they, they, they've they been linked up since Chavez, okay? Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake thee, that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be booties for them? That's right, and everyone's just a booty, a spoil for America, because America could go in and just set its, it set its policy, its so-called foreign policy, to whatever it feels like. Every four years, new president or a new, a new uh, administration, eight years sometimes, they come in and they do what? They set new foreign policy. America first, right? That was supposed to be a policy. But really, what is he doing? He's building a wall, which is going to do what? Make this place go in the complete and inevitable debt to the point where the place, this, the government's going to collapse. And he had to shut down the government, man. Why? Because there's not enough money. The money ain't flowing like it used to. And all these stores are shutting down. And this is Nahum 3 verse 1. Woe to the bloody city it is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. Yeah, and America is the bloody city. America was established by what? Blood. The destruction. The genocide. The enslavement. The chattel slavery. And the continued oppression of you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. It's in. It's full of lies and robbery. America, all it does is lie. Its foreign policy is a lie. You say you want to spread democracy, but you want to put in what? Your dictators. You want to. You say, oh, we're all about free elections and free societies. But you're setting up bogus elections. You set up Pinochet, Pinochet in Chile. What was he? A dictator. Oh, you set up, uh, what's his name? The Shah. The Shah of Iran. That guy was a dictator. You set up Saddam Hussein. He was a dictator. All right, so all these different people you set up for a time being, you use them. Then, oh, wait, okay, wait, they're not right. Those guys are those guys are wicked. They're wicked dictators. They're against democracy. Okay, they're, they're oppressing their people. We got to go in and save the day. That's a bunch of lies. And it's robbery. Because you go into those nations, and what do you do? You steal all their resources. And then what about the people that live there? They get nothing. They get bombed to hell and back, right? And then what? Okay, they become terrorists and they want to destroy America. They yell death to America. But guess what? Yahweh Shemal Shai set it up that way, okay? He wants that spirit to engulf all the other nations to do what? To go to war with Babylon the Great and to raise her, to destroy her with thermonuclear fire. Okay, the noise of the whip, the noise of the rattling wheels and the prancing horses and the jumping chariots. The horsemen lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there's a multitude of slain, and a great number of carcasses, and there's none end to their corpses. They shall stumble upon their corpses. Because of the multitude of her whoredoms and the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. That's right, and America's going to be destroyed, like we're saying, World War III. This is all leading up to World War III. 
American foreign policy is about establishing its dominance, its so-called hegemony, on all the world's resources. The one in particular here is the crude oil. And why does America need oil? Because it runs its military off of it. All their ships, all their fighter jets, all their um, everything is oil-based. And then all these corporations make all these products out of it. And they want it for the cheap. They just want they just want to control everything. And the people behind it are what? The wicked elite. And they use what? They use the multitude of whoredoms. Of, and the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. The well-favored harlot is America, man. And it does nothing but what? Sell nations through her whoredoms. Oh, we're going to give you democracy. Oh, we're going to give you a free society. We're going to give you a leader that's going to that's gonna, not going to oppress you. But the whole time, he does the exact opposite, man. Oh, we're going to give rights to uh, uh, the homosexuals. Oh, we're going to allow corporations to come in and, and to operate freely here. Yet, if, if another nation wanted to do that to America, it's not going to fly. Hence, the Monroe Doctrine. These so-called white people are the devil the Bible speaks of, all right? Behold, I'm against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame. And that's what's happening. Everyone's seeing it, man. Everyone can see America for what it is. It's just a big, bad bully, and its time is done, okay? It's ran its course, and now the Most High is going to do what? Destroy it, and he's bringing it down. He's bringing it down slowly but surely. But really, it's a rapid decline, okay? Because... Ever since Donald Trump's been in the office, it's been nothing but one thing after the next. And especially out here in California, it's been one atmospheric river after the next. One disaster after the next. One, here, it went from just fires all summer, right? These fires were just lying up the place. And now you got these things, they call it the, the atmospheric rivers, these big uh, tempests. They're not even that big. There's just lots of water getting poured down. It's just destroying everything, man. Making people crash. All right, flooding whole towns. Okay, uh, oh, um, reservoirs overflowing and breaking, levees breaking. And that's the nations are seeing that and saying, okay, I think it may be it's, it may be that time. But Yahweh Shem Al is holding it back because there's more prophecies in the main one being the Karagma, the mark of the beast. Okay, I'm going to get this real quick and wrap it up. This is Ezekiel 24 and 9. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, woe to the bloody city. I will even make a, a pile for the pile for fire. Great. And what's that fire? That that nuclear destruction. Because all this foreign policy is going to lead America to what? To be overstretched, which it is. It has all these military bases all throughout the world, and it's overstretched to the point where it can't protect itself. And Trump, what is he saying? Oh, America first. That's why you need to build a wall. The wall is to protect itself from invasion, man. Okay, and also to keep you Americans from leaving. So what? So the Most High can just totally wipe you out, all right? And he's going to do that by what? I will even make the pile for great fire. Keep on wood, kindle the fire, consume the flesh, spice it well, and let the bones be burned. Yeah, it's, America's going to be a sacrifice in that day. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor. Yahabashim, Hashem, Kadash, and Shalom.